Hello everybody, hello, hello, hello. 12 and 0 Blaze of Glory. Why Blaze of Glory? Because I think it's an underused ability. Uh, what rank? Rank 1. Don't believe me? Here you go. There's a picture. Wow. Ha! Ah. Alright. Um, reason why I did a rank 1 is because if you're watching this video, um, you're probably trying to get to Pro Ladder. 12 straight wins, rank 1. So if I can do it, you can do it. Um, let's go. Alright, so here's the deck right here. It's really controlly. It has two stunning blows. It has a Giga Scorpion, has Delirium in it, it has uh, Hammond in it for movement, it has Shalmar for damage, has Karathi Heatwave for control, and it also has the ability Blaze of Glory. Move a Skeleton unit from your deck to your graveyard, then damage it an enemy unit by its power. So Blaze of Glory you're going to want to use with Yutta, and you're going to be using it with Skull, most likely. Sometimes you can use a Last Resort Raging Bear. A lot of the common bronzes, um, a lot of times you won't even be using Crow Messenger round one, even though it's thinning, you'll use it round two after the opponent passes. Crow Clan Druid will be used with your Beast Savage Bear, uh, most likely with Crow Mother, sometimes with your Scenario. Scenario, you're going to be playing round one. Playing around one because that way you can dodge Bomb Heaver. Sometimes you need a lot of points in order to get out of round. Because since we're controlly, that means we don't have a lot of points starting out. And um, you don't want people to overwhelm you, and then you lose a card down. So you just drop Scenario when you're going first. So going second is different because you can just grind people down. Hyamar is control. You use it with um, whatever you didn't use, Yetta or um, Skull. Sometimes if you didn't draw Sig is right, um, which you're going to be using as a final play with Blaze of Glory. So you Blaze of Glory, the Yetta out of your deck, and then you Sig is right for 24 points. If you don't get that, then you're going to be using the Hyamar on the Yetta or the Skull. Skull, you're probably going to be playing at the end of round one um, to overwhelm the opponent to try to win the round. And um, if you don't play round one, then you usually will play round two in order to get the Hyamar. You always want to try to get one Savage Bear in your graveyard to get uh, value off of it. Uh, sometimes if the opponent passes round two, then you'll play round two. Savage Bear is, is what you're going to be using to beat the opponent's Azir Javid. And it's also going to be used um, against Uprising as bleed damage. Bear Master gets value no matter what, so you never really need the Bonded. But if you have the Bonded, it's better, um, better obviously. And then you have Delirium and uh, Giga Scorpion Decoction. Delirium is as a last resort to kill the Azir Javed, and sometimes it can be used with Andrega Larva. Decoction is used for Stefan and Damien and anything else that you need. Stunning Blow is good because it's good versus the Glennis as well as the Percival, which is um, cards that are really difficult to deal with otherwise. Hammond is movement. Uh, movement's always good, especially on a body. And uh, what you're going to be using with the scenario is you're going to be using the five Druids that you have in the deck. One is Crow Mother. One is Grimmest. You have two Crow Clan Druids, and you also have Ermion. And so um, that's basically it for the deck itself. You have the Heat Wave, which is Controly um, versus Shielded Unit. So it can take care of heft a boosted Hefty Helga. It can also be um, taking care of a Shielded NR Defender. So it's actually a really important card in the deck. And um, it can also be used if the opponent like Defenders into Scenario. You can Blaze of Glory and then Heat Wave the Artifact, which is fantastic. And so that's basically the deck. Uh, like I said, scenario, you're probably going to be playing round one. Mulligans is very simple. The only mulligans you need to know is get rid of your bronzes. Get rid of your bronzes and always look for more gold. You always want to mulligan Yutta, of course, so that way you can pull it with the Blaze of Glory. And um, you always want to have one Savage Bear in your hand. Because if you have two, it's negating the value that you'll get in future rounds. Crow Messenger, sometimes you'll even mulligan them. It doesn't really matter. Um, you probably don't want to mulligan too many Druids, though, because you only have five in the deck. And make sure with Ermion that you uh, keep an alchemy card in your deck. That's why we have the Golden Froth. All right. So those are the Mulligans. This is the deck. It's a great deck. Uh, very, very underrated. Actually, it's not even rated because people don't know about it. And so if you play it, I feel like you'll do great with it. Let's go over a couple games, shall we? All right. So here we go. Um, this is me with Hidden Cash. So with Hidden Cash, uh, you can see right here I have a full hand. I'm going first. The problem with Hidden Cash is they do a lot of points, right? So if Hidden Cash has a lot of points, and that means that I have to play Scenario here. I have to play Scenario because what do I do if they play um, Saw, if they get out their ship, if they do a lot of boosty boys? It's just going to be a very dirty scenario. I have to be the one that controls them. I can't let them bleed me with a Savola round two, right? Like, let's say in round two they go Louisa Savola. How am I supposed to control that? I need to be the one that controls. So if I'm being the one that controls, um, I have to play Scenario right here. So you want to know something amazing? I actually played Scenario here, and guess what happened then? I still lost the round. Isn't that amazing? I did as many points as I possibly could, and I lost the round. So let's go on to, um, to uh, round two with Hidden Cash. So here's round two. Round two with Hidden Cash. 
Uh, my opponent passes. If you look in the top uh, right-hand corner, you can actually see that they have seven cards and I have ten. You want to know why? Because I started with Scenario, and then I went into Grimmest, I believe it was, to get the three, and then I went into Crow, Crow Clan Druid, and then I passed. The reason why is because if my opponent is going to win the round, and I saw that they could probably win the round, if my opponent is going to win the round, they didn't play anything important, then I need the, for them to be several cards down. They have to be several cards down, so that way I can set up my round three. So you can see here, I decided to play the Crows, and then I even played a Savage Bear. I played the Savage Bear because that sets up my round three. And so there you go. I didn't have Crow Mother in my hand round one, or of course I would have played it. So what happened at in round three let's check out round three so in round three you can see that i played crow mother since i won round uh round two so i played first round three and then they played the azar javid i i didn't draw a savage bear which is kind of sad so since i didn't draw a savage bear i have to do a last resort last resort's going to be the ermian into decoction and you can see very fortunate that it actually worked out <clears throat> and i was able to kill him but that's why you have the delirium inside the deck so then my opponent plays the artifact, which you can see right here, and I Karathi he wave it. And then I just end up controlling them, and I win the game off of that because I have Hyalmar, I have my leader ability, and I also have decoction. So that's all you have to do. I controlled them, and I won. Ha, yeah, easy. All right, next game. Next game is versus Harmony. Here's Harmony. So Harmony, if you notice, I have Scenario in my hand. But here's the, here's the issue with having Scenario in my hand. I can't play Scenario as a first card. I can bully, I can try to bully Hidden Cash, but I can't bully Harmony. The reason why is because let's say I win round one. How am I supposed to bully him round two? I have to get the Waters of Broccolon out if if I'm trying to beat them round two. The reason why I have to get the Waters of Broccolon out is because round three, if I don't, then they'll go Waters of Broccolon into Waters of Broccolon, and it doesn't matter how much control you have, you can't beat that. You know what I mean? Because it'll always just get bigger and bigger, and that's not including the Percival, and that's not including Defender. Because what am I supposed to do round three if they do Waters of Broccolon into, and then leave it alone? I kill one, and then they go Waters of Broccolon into Defender, right? Then they have two that's going to be growing, and I can't and I can't take care of it anymore. So I start pretty slow with them, hoping that I can edge out the round. Um, actually, I didn't edge out the round. So here's what happened round two. So round two, my opponent started with the... Uh, Waters of Broccolon. My biggest concern was if they did two round three, if they passed and did it, but they got greedy here for some reason. So when your opponent gets greedy in here, um, a lot of my chat was telling me, hey, Oshima, just um, just go ahead and play the Delirium, or go ahead and Hyalmar or something like that. But I actually took a different route, because if you notice, my leader ability round three would do what? It's just supposed to kill a Dryad, right? So why not use the leader ability this round? And I can get a card advantage on him because I'm at seven and he's at six right now. So why don't I just use my leader ability and get a card advantage? So what I did was I actually leader ability one of his dryads, which I would have done round three regardless. And then I delirium and get a perfect delirium off. This should never happen if you're playing against Mystic Echo because they should always have defender. But because he played greedy against me and they're not used to playing against Blaze of Glory, I was able to safely clear the board and watch what happens next. The answer may shock you. Ha! Ha <laughs> ha! Watch this. Skip, skip, skip. My opponent passed. He passed. He gave me a Waters of Broccolon and he passed. So you want to see what happens round three? Watch this. Watch what happens round three. I start with Scenario, right? So I start with the Scenario. He goes into the typical Waters of Broccolon and Defender. Um, here's a secret. It doesn't affect me at all. You want to know why? Because all I do is I lay down a Grimmest and now I purify it. Imagine if I hadn't used my Leader ability like that in round two. Then I would have had to have leader ability and then hit it, or if I grimace, then it gets even bigger, so there's nothing I can do here. But my opponent ends up playing the Percival, and then I have a stunning blow that can take care of it. And you want to know something else? So after I took care of that, take a look at this right here. Here's the end of the game. At the end of the game, uh... Hey, where's Harmony in? Here it is. At the end of the game, look at this. Do you see any of his Waters of Broccolon? No. I took care of them all. I grinded them down. It's that that's how much control you have in the deck, but you have to play it well You can't just like be greedy with this deck if you see something that has to be controlled You have to control it So my opponent ends up playing Barnabas and look 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 at me. I'm cruising right now Like it doesn't matter like I'm not he has one card left The only poison he had was this right here and you want to know something he poisoned my crow mother because whenever I did this right here I margined the crow mother. I didn't play Yudda until very late. So yeah, I was I, even though, like, he won the round, 
Um, I still took care of his Waters of Brockline. So that's how you take care of Harmony. Game three was against Monsters. Here's here's Monsters right here. So um, if you notice right here, um, I'm at six cards and he's at seven. I have a pretty comfortable lead, right, of 18 points. And so I'm like, I'm feeling okay right now. Uh, my opponent does something pretty weird, though, if you look at this right here. This is the beginning of round one. I'm going first again, um, but I played it. I played it pretty aggressively, but he just goes into his leader ability. So whenever he goes into his leader ability, he's actually able to take the lead here. And so he's not up by six points at this moment. He's actually up by six plus two of the debt laughs, which he still has, plus the fog, which he still has, plus a tick right here. So I'm at six cards and he's at six cards. There's no reason for me to continue playing this because my cards are too valuable for me, right? I just have to say to myself, okay, I'm not winning this round. Why would I bleed myself of my better cards? I'm at six and he's at six. If I went down to five cards in this situation, um, I only have one card to catch up with them. But because I'm at six cards and I go to nine cards, then I have eight, then I have nine to eight and eight to seven round two. So I have two cards to catch up with them to not lose a card here. So let's move on to round two. Uh, this monster game was actually pretty interesting. So he starts with the Corinthian into Plague Maiden. And so I have a lot of options here. I could, if I wanted to, Heat Wave this. But if I Heat Wave this, he'll play the second Plague Maiden, right? There's no reason for me to kill it. There's no reason for me to do anything like that. So I actually just play pretty slow with the Crow Messenger. You know what I could... You know what my game plan here is in this situation? My game plan is for him to play a second Plague Maiden in the back. I want him to, like, try to do, like, a Kyran all at once or something like that. But if he plays a Plague Maiden in the back, you know what I do? I use my Hammond and I move it to the front. That way he can only get one line of um, Plague Maidens. Isn't that smart? But this guy played really well. I didn't I didn't tell you, but he played really well around one, too. So he actually goes into doing this. So this is a tricky situation here. Because in this situation, I could use the Delirium to kill these rats. But we know he has a second Plague Maiden in his hand because he Corinthered one. So what am I supposed to do in this situation? I instinctively know that I'm supposed to kill the Barghast. Because you know what's going to kill the second Plague Maiden? The Heat Wave. So as long as I have that Heat Wave, I'm fine. He's always going to have one line of rats in this situation. So there's no reason for me to de Delirium this here. Because if I Delirium this here, all he does is he does the, um, the Bar Guest and then eats the second Plague Maiden. So what you do is you take care of the Bar Guest here. And then you just wait for, and he did the Yin, he did the Bone Talisman here. And here's where we stood round three after he did all that. Um, and I just I just weathered the storm. So he actually had a card advantage and I had to use my leader ability. But I knew as long as I held on to my delirium, as long as I hold on to my Karathi Heat Wave, I can disrupt his game plan. He didn't use the Morvid. So I didn't delirium here. I still played extremely slow. The reason why is because why would I delirium here if he has um, these that he can eat, right? I want him to try to use all of his abilities. So I saved the Karathi Heat Wave for his Plague Maiden. And then he and Drago Warriors, the Night Rates, and then I do the Delirium. Only at this moment do I do the Delirium to try to counter his plays. And so, um, saving the Delirium for round three was really good. I used Hyalmar instead. And chat was like, oh, don't use don't use uh, Hyalmar here. But, but I knew that as long as I counter his rats, I should have a pretty um, good position here. And so I actually ended up winning this game. You can see I'm up by a ton of points. I ended up winning this game by not an insignificant amount. So that's how you beat rats. Uh, let's go on to... <clears throat> should we go on to Uprising? All right, so here's Uprising. So Uprising round one. If you look here, I started slow. I went first again. Every single game I went first. Um, not that I planned it that way, but I was just hitting a really hard um, roll on going first. And that's actually good for this video because it allows me to show you what to do going first. Going second is a lot easier. So I played slow. My opponent played really quick. They did the Queen of Dahlia. And at this moment, I have to pass. I made six cards. He's at six cards. If I keep playing, you know what he does? He uses this on Anse. He blows this up, and then I lose on even. I don't want to lose on even. So um, I just end up passing, and then my opponent um, plays another Caravan. He probably shouldn't have even played the Caravans, to be honest. Because um, his leader ability with the Caravans is really good in getting more Lear and Scythemen. So I was actually happy that he played these early on. So round two with Uprising, uh, my opponent played Cow, and then I played Delirium on it. So he was trying to push me round two, um, but my Delirium made quick work of that. You see how important Delirium is for the deck now? And then he does the Stringa, and then I use Ermion into Decoction. And so I basically countered his entire play. 
So he's trying to push me around, but I'm making it very difficult for him to push me around. Um, and so this means that we're going to go into a longer round three. But it's not like I mind going into a longer round three, right? Because as long as I have the tools that can control him, he already used the Queen of Dahlia. Then I should be fine. And so that's the end of that round. And let's move on to round three. And round three versus Uprising, you can say, see they played a bunch of cards. This game, this was really straightforward, like this round right here. And you can see I just used a Heat Wave on something random and my leader ability on something random. He already used his leader ability. And you can see it's not close again. It's not close because, like, if, if I can control them, I just use my Savage Bear after he used the Cursed Knight. Uh, then, then like, they can't have boosts. And what's what's he supposed to do against me? Ha! <laughs> Like, the Visguard is, is sad. Like, that's not a good Visguard. And so he can do whatever he wants, and then I just do this Yggdrif is right. Boom, get the Crow Mother out. You know, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a 24-point card in his hand. <laughs> just a Bone Talisman. So there is nothing he could do right here. So I boxed Uprising like it was nothing. Finally, let's move on to Imperial Enforcer. Or what are they called? Imperial? Yeah, I think it's Enforcer, isn't it? Something. Anyway, um, so they use the Defender. You know, instinctively, whenever I see them play a Defender, I just start with Crow Mother here. Because, like, what else are you supposed to play with this hand? I didn't have anything. It's really straightforward, right? Play Raging Bear if you have Raging Bear, if you don't play Crow Mother. If you're going first and you have Scenario and you're afraid to get um, beat out of the round, then just use your Scenario. Um, but, yeah, so you can see right here, I, I think, oh, my God, I see a Defender. I have to he wave it. But then, I'm, then I check myself. I'm like, hey. If they use Defender on one, that's good for me. That's one less thing I have to kill, right? Because it's not like he's going to beat me on points. The only way he's going to beat me on points is if he does like some weird Damien with his leader ability. But I'm not even scared about that. The reason why is because I can always kill this if I want to with uh, my leader ability. So if he does like a max leader ability, I can always kill this anyway and he wave the Damien. So the most important thing in this um, situation is just making sure I get a good Crow Clan Druid. Because as you can see, I don't have many Druids in my hand. Or many Beasts, rather. So I get a good Crow Cran Druid. He uses the Glennis. I'm okay with that. That's one less target I have to kill. And then I just uh, feel out like maybe one more card and or maybe two more cards. It just depends. And then um, that's the end of the round. And round two was uneventful. He passed round two. He didn't even do anything. And I just played Crow Messenger. And here's what happened round three versus them. So here's round three. So that's my graveyard. Round three, um, I started with Scenario. He played the portal, then I played the uh, totem. He, I played this, he turned, he joust me, I played that, then he played that. And you can see right here, um, I have so much control in my hand. I'm just like, hey, let's just kill more half of these. Because let's say he has five boost targets in his hand to simulate. Then it's like I'm hitting a nine regardless. So I might as well just kill it, right? So I decide just to kill one. I have Decoction for the other one. I have Heat Wave for whatever he plays. Look at this right here. This guy thinks he's so clever. He's like, oh, I'm just going to play Hefty Helga and I'm going to boost it one time. That's not how it works. You want to know why? Because I have Heat Wave in my hand. So he basically just blows a charge. And I can still take care of any Damien he has or anything with my leader ability. So this deck will just control you. Like, you, you do not... Like, it's very hard <laughs> to not get controlled by this deck. Because what's he, what's he going to, I didn't flip these because one, they play around poison. Two, if he, if he assimilates and steals one, he's only getting a four, not a six. So here's what the end of the game looked like. Let me show you what the end of the game looked like. End of the game. Look at this. Um, I just played my Sigdrif is right. I hit something. He has no assimilate targets, really. He, pff, I even, I don't know if you noticed this, but look at this right here. I even hit my own guys. I even hit these guys. Why? Because in case he has a Regis. That's how cognizant you have to be. I was up by so many points. He would have cleared this entire row. But I even hit these just so he wouldn't have a Regis target at the end of the round. I'm up by 30 points. What's he going to do? Like, these guys think they're control. But you can, you're can. you the real control deck. And so I basically showed you guys. How many games did I show you right now? I showed you Uprising. I showed you Monsters. I showed you Imperial. I showed you Hidden Cash. I showed you Harmony. I showed you five games just now about how I control people. And this happened every single game. 12 games in a row this happened. So, um, if you're interested in looking at this deck, I'm going to put it in the section below. I, I, hope, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I, I enjoyed making it for you guys. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments, and I'll answer them. And if you want to see the actual all the games, I'll put the VOD where you can watch it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.